Hello, IELTS Energy students, and hello, Teacher Aubrey. Hey, Jessica. How's it going? Fantastic. I, guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you may notice that I shaved my head. Um, I do this like once a year, I feel like, or every couple years. Um, we are not talking about hairstyles today, though. Aubrey, what are we talking about today? I do want to say, though, you should watch on YouTube just to see, because I know, Jessica, you're going to, like, touch your head a few times. You, like, can't help it. It just feels cool, right? It feels so cool. Oh, guys, if you've ever shaved your head, it feels so soft and nice. Stop touching it. I know. I'm going to. Okay. I, I solemnly vow to not touch my uh, head oh, we'll for see. the rest of the recording. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. <laughs> That's actually okay, so, yeah. some great vocab, though. Instead of saying, like, I promise to do something, you can say, I solemnly vow to do Ooh. something. <laughs> yes, solemnly. Ooh, that's such a good adverb. Band nine adverb, you guys. Band nine. Work that into speaking. Awesome. But today, we're actually talking about writing. Yes. We know writing is the hardest IELTS score for so many of our listeners. And we have a really interesting topic that we've actually never chatted about on the podcast before. Mm -hmm. And this could really trip you up on test day. So I'm excited to dive into this today. Yeah, totally. So... We have um, an IELTS writing course. If you guys don't need the other three sections of our preparation program, you can just get the writing course. Go to allearsenglish.com slash writing only. Um, and we've had some very hardworking students in there that are stuck at a six at a 6.5, right? And they just can't get beyond that. And today's topic will help you push beyond that because sometimes IELTS really throws you for a loop. They try to confuse you in task one. So what is this confusing task one question that we're talking about? What does it look like? Yeah, so we're talking about academic task one today, which can be so difficult. You have graphs and charts, and they often all look a little bit different. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the trickiest I've seen in a while because it had several lines, and one of them was an average of all the lines. So yeah. it had all these different types of birds, wild birds and farmland birds, and then one said all species. Mm. And that's an average. So yeah. this, you're going to have to treat it a little differently than the average chart that has four very separate categories of information. Exactly, exactly. And you guys, so that was a change over time graph because um, it's talking about how the populations changed. But you could also see this in static task one. I've seen this on tables before where they have like, um, oh, I just touched my head again. Where I knew they it was going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> They'll have four um, categories, you know, comparing these whatever topic in 2014. And then they'll have a final column with the average or the overall or something. So, guys, hopefully, if you've been listening to us for a while or you've taken the Three Keys IELTS course, you know that in order to get a high score for task and cohesion for uh, task one, you need to organize all of this information into two logical groups, right? But here's the tricky part. This average line or column, that doesn't fit with any of the other groups. So where should we put it? Yeah, so what really makes sense is to include it either in your overall trend in the introduction mm -hmm. or as a separate conclusion paragraph, because mm -hmm. you're right, we need to see, the examiner needs to see that you can separate this information into two groups that make sense, mm -hmm. but you can't just leave this out. It does need to be included. Exactly. So these are the two mistakes I see students making with this uh, question type. And you saw a student making this last week with this very question. Um, students know that they have to include this information, but they don't know where to put it. So they'll try and fit it in in paragraph two or paragraph three with another line that is very specific. So that grouping is illogical. So it doesn't do anything good for your score, right? It gets you stuck at a six. However, other students, this is the second mistake, other students just choose like, I don't know where this goes. I am going to ignore this now. And then they don't mention it at all anywhere. And then their task score goes down to a five because they did not include that key information, right? So where should we put it then? What do we do with this information? Yeah, so, so 
Yeah, as an overall say, trend, right? Right. And let's give an example, right? Yeah. So your overall trend, you want to share an overall idea of the whole chart. So for a change over time, you guys, there's so much information with our past episodes and blog, you can search on there. But basically, you want to share the biggest increase and the biggest decrease mm -hmm. for static, highest and lowest. But for this overall trend, you'd want to do that, right? Share the biggest increase, the biggest decrease, and then a separate sentence like, Interest interestingly, the average, and then you share a separate sentence that shares that average number. What did it do? Exactly, exactly. Um, so, Aubrey, can you go ahead and read the corrected overall trend? Because it, guys, like this is where you do need two sentences in an overall trend, right? This is an exception because almost always it's just one sentence overall trend. We have to keep that sweet. We have to keep it general. We don't put any numbers in the overall trend ever, right? So what does the band line overall trend sound like for this, um, for this question? Awesome. Okay. It could be overall the number of both woodland and farmland birds dropped while the quantity of coastal species surged over this period. Interestingly, the average of all species oscillated and rose only meagerly. You know, I love that overall trend. That vocabulary is straight from Three Keys IELTS, right. <laughs> by the way, guys. So again, if you do want to check out the Three Keys IELTS writing course, just go to allearsenglish.com slash writing only. Or if you need the complete system, go to allearsenglish.com slash K-E-Y-S. Um, okay, this is awesome. Guys, if you have any other questions about writing, you know we're the experts. We will try to mention your questions on the show. Send us your queries and comments um, at support at allearsenglish.com. Okay, awesome. This is a succinct yet extremely useful episode for your writing scores today. Thanks, Aubrey. Yes, you guys, such a fun thing to think about and important because on test day, you don't want something like this to really give you that pitfall, that roadblock to ruin your score, right? Don't let that happen. Be ready. Be prepared. Now, yeah. You are if you get this academic task one question. Exactly, exactly. All right, Aubrey, I'll see you uh, tomorrow. All right, see you next time. Bye. Bye.